Yeah. 
This morning's responsive reading is taken from Revelation chapter 6, verse 2 through 7. That's Revelation chapter 6, verse 2 through 7. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And Your grace and your mercy. Yes. The 
brought us through. Amen. We thank you, Father, for your blessing that you bestowed on young people this day, Father. Yeah. Father, we thank you for how you have just been so good to us. Amen. You've been so good to us, Father. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Father. Right. Father, we realize that some things we do that that not good for us, you have overlooked it. You have taken some things that we didn't even know we was in trouble with and moved it out of our way. And we thank you, Father. Thank you. Father, we thank you, Father, as we look at our lives that we have not done all that we should have done. And we thank you, Father, for your forgiveness of those things that we did against you, Father. And Father, we ask that you continue to help us to learn how to forgive one another Amen. the way you have forgiven us. Yeah. Help us, Father, to learn how to love the way you loved us, Father. Father, we realize you loved us so much that when we were still in our sin, you sent a Savior to redeem us back to you. And we thank you, Father. Thank you. Father, we come this morning asking for your, your blessing upon those who are going through sickness at this time. Yeah, Lord. Father, there are many on their sick beds and we realize that sometimes the doctors give up on them, Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Father, we know that you, Father, that will never give up on us. Yeah. And Father, we realize that the three Hebrew boys said, if you didn't save them out the fire, you're still able. Amen. So, Father, we ask you to bless those who are going through sickness at this time. Yeah. And we thank you for those who have already returned back to us, Father. And we ask you to continue to be with those who are still sick. Yeah. Father, there are some who have lost loved ones. Lord. And, Father, we, 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 we have often spoke more about the, the COVID death than folks who died from real from from things and make natural causes. Right. So Father, we ask you to, to continue to send your comfort to all the families who lost yeah, love. Yes, Father, thank you for your comfort that you've already provided for us. Father, we know that this day is a blessing to us. Yeah. And Father, as we look towards the end of this week, on Friday, the day we call Christmas, but Father, we realize that Christmas is every day. Amen. We recognize the birth of your son each and every day of our lives, Father. Amen. And we thank you, Father, for allowing us to recognize him, Father. Amen. And Father, we give you praise and honor for always giving us a mindset to recognize your son, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Father, we come this morning on behalf of this local congregation. Father, you know, we, 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 as we look back over this past year, and as we have met from Sunday to Sunday, yeah. you have been a blessing yeah. to us. Thank you, Lord. We realize that you have allowed us to come in and go out without one catching the COVID in service. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for your blessing that you blessed on us. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for us having the faith that you would watch over us. Amen. Father, we thank you for us during hard times that we continue to keep the faith of you, Father. Yes. We thank you, Father, for just blessing us to always want to be in your presence. Yes. Father, we just thank you. Father, we thank you for our man servant who stand here from day to, from day, to day to present your word, Father. Amen. Father, we thank you for how you present your word to help us during this hard time, Father. Yeah. Father, we thank you for his family. Yes. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for our leaders of this congregation. Yes. We thank you for blessing us that you continue to lead your people. Yes. Father, we come thanking you and asking for your continued healing of our nation. Yeah. We know you have started. But sometimes we doubt as we look at the commentary that's going on the TV. Yeah. We look at the commentary of the things that the lies that's being portrayed each and every day. Mm -hmm. And Father, sometimes we lose faith. Yeah. 
But Father, then we think about it once again. It's not them that work that run this world. It's you who run this world. Amen. So we thank you, Father, for just blessing us to continue to rely on you, Father. Amen. And Father, we know that you are going to fix the problem of this world. Amen. And we thank you. Amen. Now, Father, as we close this prayer, we thank you for your son. He was born in a manger. He was born in a house that didn't belong to him. He lived out his life for 33 years, Father. He went to a judge, a, a court that did not judge him fairly. He walked up a dusty hill, Father, to a dusty street to a hill called Golgotha. He was laid on a cross. Nail was nailed in his hand and in his feet. They lift him up and dropped him up. They hung him there all day Friday. Then, Father, he went to, to a borrowed tomb. But that day, they, they thought that was the end of it. He spent three days in that tomb. But early one Sunday morning, yeah. he got up yeah. with all power, all power. in his hand. Yes. Yeah. And it's in his name that we give this prayer. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Watch ye therefore, you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. If you labor, striving for the right, you know that you shall wear a golden crown. Church in heaven say you, say you shall wear a crown. Wow. 
should be back in their cities by, by what he called Easter weekend. Even then, COVID was, was raging and we had to adjust to the thought that maybe we won't be back in April. And then May came and we won't be back in May. Then June, numbers began to climb and, and things are still, were still not the same. July and August, still uh, COVID raging. And then September, October, November, December, uh, the, the pandemic raging and it seemed like no answer. But one thing is true, throughout all of that time, God has been God. Yes. He? And he's been good to every one of us. Thank him. Thank him for keeping you. Because somebody can tell you right now, you could be somewhere else, on your bed, barely able to breathe, with family praying for you outside your room and all of that's necessary. But you're here this morning and thank God that he's kept you and brought you here on the down. saying you ought to be happy. You ought to be happy not just because it's December or you'll be off a few days this week and you've got one or two gifts under a tree somewhere. You ought to be happy because God's been good to you. And you ought to praise Him every day of your life for what He continues to do for every one of us. Stay in prayer for, for the country. Many of us have been affected by, by COVID this year, either with sickness or death uh, in our families. And we, we continue in prayer. And, uh, Continue to ask God that he would do what is his will uh, in due time. We're thankful for the good news we received about the uh, vaccine and we trust that uh, you, will, you, will, you will get your, get your shot. Uh, amen. Get your, get your vaccine if, if you will. And, uh, and don't have, you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about whether or not uh, anybody's seeing you help. I'm going to be watching you see how that vaccine does. <laughs> Man, man, you watch it. And yes, on that, uh, somebody has put up there in about 20 years. Uh, someone will say, if you took the COVID vaccine and you, and you are experiencing the symptoms, please come down and kiss your mother. Uh, 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 20 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, you've grown two extra fingers or something like that. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, you should be all right. I've got family members that have already taken taking COVID-19, but you know, I'm way down on the list as far as accessibility, that kind of thing. But if you're one of the, if you're one of the early targets for the shot, let me know so I can watch you. And, uh, see how you, see how you come along. And, and perhaps we'll be all right together. But we're thankful for science. We're thankful for what God gives man the ability to do. Because everything we have the ability to do mirrors the genius of God. We can't know anything that God does not already know. He already gives us opportunity to participate in this great creation. God already knows to make sure that how the plants will grow. But he's given us wisdom to know 
how to make plants grow. He already knows how to keep livestock and cattle safe, but he, he allows us to learn how to keep livestock and cattle safe. He already knows what to do about the flu and the cold and the COVID, but he allows us to participate in investigation and ex exploration and, and science so that we come to know his genius, and we thank God for that. We're thankful most of all for this first day of the week. We have one more, if the Lord says the same, one more Sunday in the year uh, 2020. 2020 is coming to a close. Pray God that 2021 will be a better year than 2020. And on, the, on uh, December 31st of this year, the Lord allows us to see the same. Don't be passing up those black eyed peas. Eat them this year. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't eat those black eyed peas last year. We don't want another year like that. And if, and if you can, take 12 grapes. Eat 12 grapes, one for each month of the new year. Get, get this year started right. Then go to God and pray as the new year comes in. Don't mess off the end of the year. We need all. We need God to, to help us uh, through that year. I'm looking this morning at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 19. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 19. The Bible reads there, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this one. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. That's an interesting phrase, didn't it? We preach all week long before they came together. Say amen when you can. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away credibly. That's Matthew 1, 18 through 19. I like what the text says here about Mary before she came together. And there are some things that, that we ought to teach children they ought to have on their mind before they come together with somebody. Yeah. Then the Bible says about the, the guy she would come together with, that he was a just man. And young ladies ought to be taught, look for a just man. Amen. Amen. Look for a good man. There is a such thing, there is such a thing as a bad man and a good man. And all men's is not alike. Now, I purposely said men's, I don't know. <laughs> but all men are not the same. It would be good in our society today if we could get back to teaching for what to do before you come together. And teach for the difference between good marriage, potentially marriage partners and and those that might cause you a little trouble. Yeah. And some of you who have been married for just a day, you know, you can have trouble on the first day. Yeah. You know that's the truth. <laughs> some people on the day of their marriage, they're arguing for the wedding is over. Yeah. Something has not gone right at the wedding. Somebody didn't look right. Somebody didn't wear the, the right shoes. Somebody forgot their necklace. Somebody showed up late. You're going to need Jesus in a marriage, so make sure you, you get the right person before you get into even a relationship. A relationship can mess you up yeah. for the rest of your life. I'm saying some stuff old folk used to say. You have to watch the kind of folk you get involved with because what seemed to be your honeymoon today can be your sour break tomorrow. <laughs> Better watch what you get with in a relationship. Some of y'all putting your hands down already wishing. I hear people say from time to time, I wish I had heard that when I was young. You did. You just didn't pay any attention. <laughs> Going to talk this morning on the subject, the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ. That is a religious group that believes it's not quite appropriate to talk about anybody's birth. Not only the birth of Jesus Christ, but, but your own birth, your birthday. And uh, place no significance on that. But I, I want to say, on this morning, all of life is significant. All of life has meaning. From the day that we are conceived and before, in our parents' womb to the day that we walk 
no more of this time side of life. We need to treat all of all the days of our lives as if they are days with with meaning. No day ought to be deemed an unnecessary or a bad day when we know God and want to live to the glory of God. The birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus comes into the world as the fulfillment and expectation of his mother, certainly, but more importantly, his birth into the world is the crowning birth of all humanity. What I've just said is that there has been no more birth more important than the birth of Jesus Christ. Children were promised, anticipated, and expected in times past. They were also born after parents were informed of how they especially fit into the plan and purpose of God. Recognize, however, that no birth has ever been as important as the birth of Jesus Christ. It's amazing to see how, how people treat the birth of Jesus Christ. They will allow that the skeptic will, the agnostic will, the the atheist will. They will allow that everyone else they ever heard of in life had a birth. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, they say they don't know if he were actually ever born. And I say again, there has never been a birth as important as the birth of Jesus Christ. Examining a series of birth, we begin with the promise made to Abraham that God would bless him in Genesis chapter 12. And give him seed in his old age. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. And I've got to be admirable. I've got, I've got to admire Abraham to bring a child into the world at 100 years old. Some of y'all just had a neck ache just then, just thinking about a child you know, at 100 years old. But I, I also have to admire, admire Sarah. Sarah was willing to go along with. Abraham telling her that God has promised me that the two of us, and an angel even told Sarah, the two of us are going to have a child and we're going to have a child in our old, old age. And some of y'all, y'all know this is an amazing thing because some of y'all, y'all be telling folk uh, way before then, I don't feel like being father. <laughs> amen. Say amen when you can. But Abraham and Sarah, the Bible said, were would bring forth Isaac into this world at 100 years old, at 90 years old. And, and let me interject this here. God created the world, and he created a complete world and a, and a perfect world. But what we discover in God's creation from, from the very beginning, that although God created man complete and upright, man had the ability to ignore God. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve both uh, ignored God. And Eve took up the fruit of the, of the tree and she ate and she gave to her husband. And, and God created them to, to glorify him and to live in his image. But from the very beginning, man has demonstrated that he has a, an ability to either obey God, hear God, or ignore God. Now I say that for the geniuses and the brilliant people in, a, in the world, in America, all over the place who think that because they have the ability to ignore God, that they have reached the level in life of intelligence that other folk don't have. Understand this, folk have always ignored God. It didn't start in the 20th century or the 19th century or the 21st century. God has always given us the right and the ability to ignore him and disobey him. So stop telling yourself on the back. Because you ignore God and try to think him out of existence while acknowledging your own existence. That, that's a spiritual, that's a spiritual thing, a soul thing. But the other thing to recognize about humanity is that although God created uh, humans uh, complete, that we find that there was some who could not live up to their physical potential. And we see it especially in these cases of these women in the Bible who were barren and could not have their own children. God, I thought you created men and women perfect, men and women whole, men and women. Why, God, 
uh, is there in the world barrenness? Here's another thing to understand about God. That though God created us upright spiritually, and although, although God created our bodies formed from the dust of the ground, God never said about life that everything about our physical being or our spiritual being would be complete all the time, would be whole all the time would function like we wanted it to function all the time and what we learn from that is we've got to learn to depend upon what is the will of God. Amen. And I say about birth, here's something we got to understand about birth. No one is born unless God says yes. God is responsible for every birth in this world. Everybody born is a result of the goodness of God. So Abraham and Sarah would bear Isaac. The birth of Isaac's son were also significant. What we find there too, they too came with promise from God, a direct fulfillment of God's intended purposes for Israel and all of mankind. God assured Jacob and Esau's mother, two nations are in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from it. Your Bible, that the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Genesis 25, 23, Jacob was the younger and assumed the primary position of God's dealing with God's elect. I say God uh, is the one who's responsible for all of our lives, and then God is responsible for who we are in life. Jacob and Esau are born twins, but God determined two different paths for these two young men. And we have to understand in life that we're not all on the same path, but thank God that he keeps us on the path that he designates for us. Amen. Now, you know, hear people say, I don't want to be like everybody else. Well, you can't, and you don't have to. Amen. You have to be, and you get to be what God has determined you to be. Birth concerns continue to be a part of the story during the time when Moses was born. I want you to recognize a pattern in, in these verses that they are a, a, a continuous story and pattern when Moses was born. Remember Pharaoh had decreed that male Hebrew children be killed at birth. Exodus 1 and verse 16. The mother of Moses, however, saw that her male child was a godly and a goodly child. Rather, Ephesians and Exodus 2 and 2. And gave him for three months. After she could no longer hide him, she put him in the ark, in the river, making it possible for her Pharaoh's daughter to eventually adopt her. Exodus 2, verses 5 through 6. The birth and life of Moses are significant in the story of the salvation of mankind. I said that earlier this week, uh, even in our community, I'm talking about our ethnic community, we've got to recognize that although things may not be in our favor in society, may not be in our favor in politics, may not be in our favor when it comes uh, to economics, that is no excuse for us not to have trust in God. You have to remember that uh, when Moses was born, uh, the Israelites were in slavery, were they not? And they had been in slavery for 400 years. I said this in response to someone who was trying to give an explanation for why, why in our community, uh, births in our community, and I'm talking about pregnancies in our community, are terminated at the highest rate in this country. That is, the greater number of abortions in this country happen in the African American community. And someone says, the reason is because our communities are, are suffering. There's no hope in our communities. Young men and young women don't want to bring children into this world where there's so much trouble. And I remind God's people, I'm not talking about our ethnic group. I'm not talking about another ethnic group. I'm not talking about examination of sociology and socioeconomic strata, uh, strata in this country. I'm talking to the people of God. Regardless of what's going on in the world, don't ever forget what God can do. Yeah, these children were born into slavery. These male children were also under threat. Like our male children are under threat. Like our male children don't have the same access to things. 
did things. These children were born into slavery. They were ridiculed by the Egyptians. They were suspected by the Egyptians. Somebody said it wasn't as hard as the slavery we were in. Understand this. They were to be killed at birth. They were to be killed at birth. But the Hebrew women, these Hebrew women trusted in God. Somebody ought to recognize there's a difference in the thinking of a child of God than the thinking of somebody in the world. The world may give up, but we always trust in God. We always have hope in God. We always think about the deliverance of God. A child of God does not think like the world. And we need to remember that in the church. As we go around spewing the same nonsense of a world of no hope that the world spews. These women, along with Moses' mother, said, I don't care what Pharaoh says. I don't care what the culture is in Egypt. I don't mind that we've been in slavery for 400 years. These women uh, demonstrated that they understood there is a God somewhere. Yeah. Praise God in your daily decisions when you recognize that what, regardless of what's going on in your life, there is a God somewhere. Yeah. And when they see you coming, they ought to be ready to hear not just the voice from society, but they ought to hear from a child of God what's on the mind of God. Y'all heard it this morning? It's the mind of God that God's children share with the world. It's what makes a difference in this world. It's the mind of God. The reason we have the Bible in the first place is so that we think beyond our human capacity and find ourselves engaged with the mind of God. Now, the other thing about Sarah, the thing about Moses' mother and others, that I recognize on this morning and, and with their births is as difficult as it was for them. They showed that it was a time to have faith in God. See, Sarah had to believe God. Uh, Jacob uh, had to believe God. Moses, his mother, had to believe God. I'm about to say something here. Not only in the births of Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, but in the birth of Samson. What we recognize the matter about all of these is that uh, these people manifested faith in difficult times. Now here, if you get this, get this, especially for the year 2020. Anybody, anybody can live and perform when the sun shines. Anybody can manage to ship when there's no storm on the sea. Anybody can manifest faith when things are regular. But what the Bible is about, understand this, the Bible is about folk who maintain faith even when difficult times come. Some folk have missed this about the Bible. The Bible is not just for my easy times. The Bible is not just for it, when everything's in my favor. The Bible is not about when I can get a job easily, get, get a car easily, maintain a home easily. That's not what it's all about. What the Bible demonstrates is when the hard times come, where is your focus? What the Bible demonstrates is when the seeds are tossed, will I remain calm? What the Bible wants to know is when the pandemic comes, will I still hold on to God? Will I still have faith in God? Will I still have trust in God? Will I still have hope in God? And praise God for the folk who say, I don't care what day it is, God's going to get praise for my life every day of my life. Let come and go with me. God's number one with me. I don't care what the other people say. I'm going to hold on to God Almighty. Yeah. Children of God, and I'm telling you a whole lot of children of God in this group this year that, that, that they thought they thought they loved Jesus. And they thought they had faith. And they thought they could hold on. And they sang that come and go what may. And now they've discovered if it's a little trouble, it can rock your faith. It's been amazing this year. I'm telling you, it's been amazing. It's been amazing because whether people wanted to or not, they had to make some adjustments in life. 
Then they make some adjustments about the store, where to go, what, where not to go. Who to talk to, who to allow in your house. They had to make adjustments about their jobs. Some people who complained that they didn't like going to work every day. Now, you got your wish, you're in that room every day now. <laughs> now you're bored, you need something, then you're gonna go stand outside, somebody to talk to you. No, you got your prayer. <laughs> had to make adjustments. But unfortunately, what's it? Unfortunately, the place people have found it most difficult to make an adjustment is in their faith and how they serve God. They've learned to deal with everything else. But their faith is losing its strength, becoming weaker. And you hear people saying things like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I ever be back in service again because it's dangerous. It's dangerous at the store. I know you get tired of hearing people saying this, and you know, people, they, 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 they may not, they know that, uh, that, that that person of uh, conjunction, or rather, uh, they learn how it is to refute arguments when you, when you say things like, you've got to be careful on your job whenever you do go in, yeah. don't you? Yeah. I hope you don't go to your job grabbing people, hugging them, giving them a kiss on the neck and things like that, and you're about to go to coffee. <laughs> You've got to make adjustments in the store. Remember, you used to stop in the store. Hey, how you doing? Now you act like you don't see it. Walking through the store, washing your hands, rubbing on cards with wipes. You didn't do that before. You just walk right in the store, pick up a card, just to go and push it. You don't know if people been pushing that buddy, sneaking off over, digging in their nose or what. Y'all know that's the truth. Folks standing all up on you, talking and going on. You can feel them talking. <laughs> Made adjustments everywhere. I messed around the other day. Uh, I was I was real daring. And I don't have another spot during COVID. I went inside a barber shop and I thought I was in a COVID incubation room. <laughs> These young barbers, brother, like young barbers. Come on. <laughs> there they're bumping fists, bumping elbows, hugging. Mask ain't on, cutting folks' hair. I was sitting in that chair, I was trembling and going on. Said, Just take a little bit off the top, I'll be out of here. <laughs> don't, don't worry about the beard, I'll take care of that later on. But the point is, people have made adjustments, and they still go on places. But in some people's mind, the most dangerous place to be is in the church building. And church folk are responsible for some of, some of that. I, I read it last night, and a church came in and uh, had, a, had a December 6th meeting at a, at, at a church, and 80, 70 something folk came down with COVID. They in there in a chorus singing a bunch of songs and no mask on. Oh, you don't need all of that. Have some sense. Sing, but sing away from somebody else. They can hear you loud, loud. They can hear you. Even with your mask on, they hear you. Didn't anybody ever tell you they hear you all over the house? Church folk are responsible for some of that. Some preacher friend was telling me that he, he had a, a child down at a church and they called the church together. This is one of them singing churches and, and they were in there singing. And this is Church of Christ now I'm talking about now. The first one was another church. This is Church of Christ. And they, and they got their mask off just singing and going because the one thing that's been hard for Church of Christ folks to let go of is this singing. They are really suffering because most of their faith was based upon this singing. Sing it here, sing it there, sing it all the time. Sing it, sing it, sing it. And, and it's hard for a whole lot of our, our folk right now. Because that singing was their faith. And they couldn't make adjustments when the time came. And I have to tell folk from time to time, God wants a song, but he wants a song of faith. Not just a good sound. When folks stand up and clap their hands and wave their handkerchiefs, it ought to be 
a song of faith. Preachers have had to make adjustments. Preachers are, are saying they're giving the full to because they said they're tired of dealing with God's poor. Well, God's poor have always been God's poor. Amen? Amen? Preachers are saying they're depressed. It's hard on them. And I have to ask, what were you preaching about then? What were you preaching for? Shake a hand at the back door? Good job, preacher. Everything's good. One doesn't just preach when folk are singing your praises because you don't have any songs sung. Amen. <laughs> you got to preach even during difficult times. And I tell you, it may be good because sometimes some folk are doing some stuff they don't need to be doing in the first place. Now right now, right now, I just crossed the line. I just crossed the line. I get accused of this all the time. You just, you just too hard. You don't have any sympathy. You don't have any empathy. You're, you're a non caring, non feeling person. So what? Okay. <laughs> Not everybody preaching needs to be preaching. Or prophesying, as some of them call it, or being an apostle, as some of them, and, and a lot of folks singing, don't need to be singing about how good God is, and it carried me through the storm. Because the minute you need a storm, God is gone. Yeah. Yeah. I was about the people of God. God has, has made a whole lot of folk come clean yes, sir. in the year 2020. Amen. And I want to say to you, if he's given you a spirit where you can hold on, you ought to be praising him all the more. Yes, God, thank you I didn't let go. Yes, sir. God, thank you that I'm weathering this storm. Yes, God, thank you that you've given me the kind of spirit that says, for real, let come and go with me. I will praise God. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw my hands up. I'm not going to back up. I'm going to praise God now and forever. That's the kind of folk you need in the church of Christ. Folk who figure out a way to continue to praise God. I want to say we're, we're glad and happy for the people who make the adjustment. At least to join us live stream. Drive join Facebook or however you do it. And we ask you to pray with us, do scripture with us, commune with us, and, and give with us. Yeah. But I also want to say too that if you ought to be going everywhere else during the week, because they don't have live stream, or Facebook for you to join, you need to cut that out too. Because the folk can see you there, we ought to see you here as a child of God. And I say something about life. You, you don't want to take unnecessary risks for sure. But every day of your life, something might happen. Amen. And let, let it be your situation that what happens in your life is that you gave God your, your very, very best. The birth stories of the Bible are sometimes difficult for us to appreciate and grasp in our, our culture, but every one of them has significance in the Bible. And I said earlier, God is responsible for every birth. But understand this too, as children of God, even as we think about Moses being born into the world, people will argue through this political season about, about, uh, uh, about uh, the right to life, whether one is right to life or poor choice. I had, I had a narrative for those who claimed to be right to life, but then had no problem with children being separated from their parents at the born. You say you're right to life, but you don't have a problem with the criminalization of, of certain societies and police brutalities. You say you, you're right to life, but you don't care that people are dying of hunger who are, who are in this world. I think the biblical principle is, how can you love him whom you have not seen? And uh, then hate the one you do see. If you really believe in right to life, it's not just for folk who are coming from the belly, it's for folk who have entered in the belly as well. You can't say your right to life and do damage uh, to your neighbor, hate your neighbor, see your neighbor suffering as well. If you're really right to life, it ought to be all of life. 
That's the problem I had with one political narrative that kept saying that that part is for abortion and that part is for choice. I'll tell you what, all of us should be for life, not just when a child is born, but after the child is born. We ought to be for the right to life and the Constitution says liberty and the pursuit of happiness. It's about all of life. We got a whole lot of Christians. A whole lot of Christians. When their children were, were taken into war, some of them in prison, others raped. And they were talking about how it was their fault that they were suffering such things. And then at the same time saying that I believe that every child ought to be born. I said, yeah, that's inconsistent. If you care for the baby before it's born, you ought to care for the baby after it is born how it is in this world. I believe that, that a child of God should be for the right to life because God is the one for the entry into the womb of the child. Here's, here's, here's the way Jeremiah uh, says it. Before I was born in the belly, I knew you. And before you uh, came before I come out of, uh, forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Jeremiah said, God knew me before I was born God knew me before I came out of the womb. God ordained me to be a prophet. I say again, God is responsible for all of life. And if we're going to be like God, we're going to care about all of life. But Jeremiah gives us something else important here. Not that God knows us before we're formed in the belly. Not just that God cares for the life in the belly. Not just that God can take care of us once we come into this world. But thank God that he has a plan for every one of us. Many of us are not explained that that plan as clearly as Jeremiah may have been or uh, as Noah may have. But God gives us opportunity to discover how he can use us in this world. God has a plan for every one of us. We thank God for allowing us to be born. Thank God for the goodness in our lives and thank God for the gifts we have and pray God that we use those gifts to his glory. When we talk about these Old Testament births, we're not to forget that our story is about the New Testament births as well. Here we have yet another woman who is barren, like Sarah was barren, like Samson's mother was barren. All of these women living a difficult life and God blesses their lives. Uh, Sarah Elizabeth was barren, but John the Baptist is her child. And then the story of Mary, the text says about Mary, before uh, she and her, her mate came together. And I say here, and I, I'm not going to look at, I'm not going to look at anybody because I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about him or talking about her right now. I'm just saying that we used to tell children, don't just hook up with anybody. Don't just hook up with the date. Don't lie down with just anybody. Don't be out here trying to be intimate with just anybody. You ought to have some gumption about yourself, some respect about yourself, some decency about yourself. You ought to recognize that God doesn't just want you with everybody. God will give you somebody who will bless your life if you just trust in God. What I'm saying is that we were not ashamed in the past to tell folks, hook up with somebody who decent got tomorrow and loves God. But I'm saying, even if we didn't practice it all the time, at least we would sing it. Yeah. Now, folks don't even want you singing. <laughs> don't even want you singing. Be decent. And guess what? What's about it? Decent. Watch this one. Watch this one. Watch this one. Listen to this one. They used to say stuff like this. Watch this. You got my back, Brother Jones? <laughs> They used to say stuff like, sex is for marriage. Oh. <laughs> I just want to speak that by before 2020 got over. <laughs> it's not for the end of the prom night. It's not at a, after a night at the bar. It's not because you sure look good. <laughs> Intimacy was a result of two people 
committing themselves to each other for love. Yeah. And even if we didn't practice it all the time, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't tell the truth right now. <laughs> At least we say it. Yeah. Now we don't want to say it. And I, and I know people make mistakes. I, we all have made mistakes. We all have done things in our youth that we regret later on. Yesterday I was on a men's, men's uh, retreat called Church of Chicago. We had a doctor on, we had uh, others on, but one of the two of the gentlemen we had on were two men who had spent time in prison, one of them for murder. And, and he was on there in Chicago. I met him and uh, he was talking and he says, you know, when I was young, talked about the mindset that he had and, and uh, that he'd taken a life. He did. He was guilty. He was guilty. But one of the things he was thankful for is that there is a God who's big enough to forgive us. Amen. Now here's the point. I, here's the point I'm really trying to make. Denying that we made a mistake doesn't make it go away. Amen. What we have to admit is that we need Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one who makes things all right. Yes. They explain, you know, things that happen in prison, what you have to go through. But his brother was in prison also. And they said they, they came up with this. The brother had spent 22 years in prison as well. And, uh, 22 years in prison. And they started an organization. An organization really that had as its goal to help African-American males to think differently. Because a lot of the stuff we do starts in our minds. Yes. Yes. And, and what happens is, especially in our community, is that we forget, as I've already said, that there is a God. But then we start using what's happening in society as an excuse yeah. not to live up to the challenges of God. Yeah. Everybody's against me. Everybody's oppressing me. Everybody's suppressing me. Everybody doesn't believe in me. You don't have to take that track. Yeah. Because everybody is not your God. Yeah. The Father of Jesus Christ is your God. And if God be your help, you can make a difference not only for your life and your family's life, but you can make a difference for society. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know what it is to be in a prison and wake up one day not knowing what your name will entail or who you're going to run into. I don't, I don't know what it is to, to get the mindset that I'm not here for a day I'm or a week or a month, but my sentence is over a decade. And how do you, how do you adjust to the thought that you're going to be in that small an area for 20 years? And I'll tell you something about that. You can't do the woe is me if you're going to wake up the next day. You can't worry about other folks' thoughts if you want to see freedom again. You've got to change your mind about what you expect of yourself and what you expect of others. And I'm saying the greatest assurance that many get during that period of time is they learn to trust in God. That's what they did. That's what they did. And I, I applaud them for that. I admire them for that. Because there's a whole lot of folk who are not locked up, right? There are a lot of folk who don't have people telling them when they can shower, when they can eat. There are people who have access to everything they want and they live their lives like they can't do anything for themselves. I'll tell you something, it's not just folk who are free from prison who know how to praise God. There's a folk in prison who can teach you something about how to give God the glory. Yes, yes, the birth of, of John, his mother had difficulty, but, and then Mary, before she came together. And the Bible says about Joseph, see, what, what you're supposed to do if you find a woman who, who's with child and, and you know it's not your child, you're supposed to bring her into society and make a public example of her. Joseph was a decent man. And he said, you know what, I really don't want to make a public example of her. I don't want folks to know what's going on. So what I'll do is I'll put her away privately. Nobody will know. If she's pregnant, 
that I put her away privately. And it's into that relationship that God comes. With Joseph living as he was living, and with Mary living as she was living. And Mary is told, you are highly favored among women. There are some young people who are ashamed to tell other folk that they don't drink like they, like others drink. They don't want folk to know. If folk are talking about all the drinks they've had, they, they try to tell you, yeah, girl, I girl, I was drunk too. They try to talk about all the guys they're going, yeah, these they, they, they girls, they, they no good. Yeah. But it's all right to be highly favored for maintaining your integrity, yeah. your purity, yeah. your faithfulness to God. Yeah. Let me talk about this birth that y'all out of here today because y'all trying to, try to have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> the birth of Jesus Christ is an occasion for happiness and joy, celebration and gladness among the children of God. The truth that God has sent him into the world, fulfilling his promise made to mankind, should always be a cause for celebration among the people of God. Even today, hearts should be encouraged as they reflect on how God has planned for our salvation, how God has kept us in his word, how God has kept us through the ages, how God keeps us even today. You're blessed today. God makes promise to Abraham and Isaac is born. Remember about God. God makes a promise and God keeps a promise. God bless Isaac and Jacob is born. Freeing his people, Moses is born. Delivering his people, Samson is born. Prophesying to his people, Jeremiah is born. Preparing his people, John the Baptist is born. And saving his people, Jesus Christ is born. Our glory and praise to his name. All glory and praise to his Father. All glory and praise because of salvation which is in Jesus Christ. And the child of God today celebrates his birth. But they not only celebrate his birth, they celebrate his life because he did all that God commanded him. They not only celebrate his birth and celebrate his life, but we praise God today that his death was efficacious. The Bible says, all we like sheep had gone astray. We turn every man to his own way. Yet the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of us can be free today. All of us can be born again today. All of us can be sanctified before God today because Jesus not only was born, but died to take away the sins of the world. I agree with what Brother Withers has already prayed. He was in the grave three days, but every Sunday morning, he arose from the grave with all power in his hand and ever lives today to bless the children of God. Thank God for his birth. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his death. Thank God for his resurrection. And thank God for our salvation even today. God's a good God. I say God's a good God. We ought to live to his glory, not only this season, but every season. Yes, not only when the weather is fair and there is no sickness, but during the pandemic. Yes, we want to tell the children of God, let's stop talking faith and let's live faith. Amen. Let's be, stop being ashamed of praising what God likes and bragging about what God doesn't like. I know they got you scared. Scared to challenge liars, they poke lying like poke lying like they were born to them. <laughs> uh, stealing, shacking up. That stuff folk used to be ashamed of. Now they post it on Facebook. My, my, my new dude, my new girl. We're not married, but we we doing some of everything. Folk used to be ashamed of that stuff. But not in our Merry Christmas. <laughs> 2020. 2020 has taught us that not being real will find you out. Either you believe in the promises and the word of God or you don't. So young folks were supposed to get married this year and COVID came. COVID came. So they canceled their wedding. Canceled their wedding. 
and they're looking for a day when COVID is not here. They're trying to postpone it for later in the year. They discovered you can't plan what's later in the year like that because you're not God. Amen. Yes. Only God knows what's going to be on the ball. And putting off doing the right to later in the year, you don't know if you got later in the year. You don't know if the circumstance is going to be right or wrong later in the year. So you know what the challenge is? Do right right now. The young man asked me last night, would you do my wedding next year? And uh, I know how you live. And what? And how he did that. How he and his friend acted like they're already married. He said, I should get you in trouble trying to plan to do right later on. Rather than doing right right now. That's what we used to teach people. Do right right now. And a lot of our young people, we got some young people here this morning. Brother Warren, we're going to young man. Oh, that mistake, not you. Uh, <laughs> but here's, here, here, here's, here's where it starts. It starts in your youth. If you don't learn to be young or be real or be young, it'll follow you throughout your Christianity. When I got married, for those of you who don't care, and those of you who do care, um, I keep one of them down. So. <laughs> I got married because I had to. I had to. Who forces it? I got married because I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think about this because I, I, we just had a wedding but anniversary the other day, 37 years, 37 years. Wow. And uh, this past Thursday, I think it was, right? Yeah. And uh, Friday. I think back on those times. Uh, uh, because what we were told when we were growing up is that if you want to be intimate with somebody, mm -hmm. you marry that person. See, that's one of the things that drives you to marriage. Right. You don't just lay down with a person. Yeah. And live with a person. Right. You marry the person. Right. Y'all heard that? Yes. And so I was preaching. I was 23 years old. I was preaching at the church. You know what he said about young preachers anyway, right? Yeah. The brothers were even arguing at that church. They said, he, you know he's a young preacher. He's going to be in this church. He's going to be with some of them. <laughs> <laughs> And you preaching for a church, you're 23 years old, you got to try to get you there. And they do not have a fiance, that's what we call it. But we meant fiance back then. Today, we just mean our sleeping party. <laughs> back then, right now, fiance means that we're going to get married one day, but not for real. Then there's something happening. And fiance. And I thought they were talking to her. She coming here. And you know, when she, when she would come and stay with me, not with me, but she come and stay with me. <laughs> Come and stay with one of the families in the church. Uh -huh. I know folks said they stay, they sneak out the door or something, but here's the thing that, here's the thing I'm talking about real. As children, we were taught that God has a certain expectation for your life. Yeah. And if you want to be a Christian, this is what you do. You don't just say you're a Christian and then do what you want to do. Yeah. You say you're a Christian, you do what God tells you to do. And she grew up, my wife did, she grew up in a church where there was no worse than that. And the preacher used to tell her all the time, she got, she's nervous about this even today. She, they, her, her preacher used to tell her all the time, y'all going to hell. <laughs> y'all going to hell, going to hell, going to hell. So even today, if I want my wife to act on I said, you know, there's a hell. Get on the table for 90 minutes and all <laughs> But see, what we've done, and this, this is all coming to fruition in 2020 is we have talked about being Christian so long that we think just to talk about it is to be a Christian. It's not just to talk about it, it's to live about it. Amen. And what I'm saying during this message is we're afraid even to say something to our folk today about there is a God. So I, I was looking at my wife, she was looking at me, and we were thinking, well, you know, this, this ain't doing it for us. We, we need to get married. 
And we weren't going to Hawaii when we got married. Ain't nobody there. <laughs> we weren't going to Cancun. <laughs> We we not taking a cruise. We ain't got no money for that. We'll be saving for ten years trying to have some money for that. So we just had a way. <laughs> just had a way because our spirituality was more important than spending a bunch of money to stay together for six months. Spend all that money before marriage and get into marriage. And can't stand. I heard some, they're talking about that this year. They, somebody brought up a report that they said, still, folk who live together before they marry are more likely to divorce than those who don't. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. We think it's the opposite. Yeah. We say things like you got to try it before you, before you buy it. <laughs> don't. I ain't gonna go to the car, I'm gonna give you no car, I ain't driven. Well, why they set a car on TV and I'm gonna drop them off at your house once you look at it on the computer? <laughs> you ain't fooling me, man. Look at my new car. <laughs> it's not the way to live. Huh? And, and we, all these churches have fun with the young people right now during this COVID. I think part of that is they've seen our hypocrisy for so long. That they thought it's all right to praise God on Sunday and live like you want. Jesus was born. Praise Him for that. Praise God for that. But He also lived. And that life was to teach us something about life. And I told you the truth before. We get ready to stand up. When my wife and I got married, I said this will last about ten years. Now, I don't know. You know, you know. We look. You know, we we both contrary. <laughs> He said, if I don't get to 10 years, I think I didn't do good. I'm on to my next one. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife that. But the Lord has blessed us. Yes, sir. 37 years. Right. 37 years. 37 years. Mm. Uh, and I told you before, there were no peaches and greens. There were some hollers and screams. Come on. <laughs> you two, tell the truth. And I'm saying people learn to trust in God. 2020 has taught us yes, hypocrisy, duplicity, saying one thing and living another will eventually manifest itself. Ah. Is God good to you? Yes, sir. If you're not a child of God, you yes, can come on this morning by believing that Jesus died for Jesus and buried rose again, repent of sin, confess Christ, be baptized, and God will add you to the church of Christ, sealed with the Holy Spirit. If you need God in prayer, make it known. Together we stand and sing an invitation song. Let us stand. There's a fountain free tis for you and me. Let us taste so taste to the brink. Tis a fountain of love from the source above and it gives us all
little stressed out about it right now. It's just the 10th birthday. If you don't come try it, then just give them strength and just keep going. All right. All right. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, once again for allowing us to come this morning to hear another question of your word to help us as your children to learn to live for you. Oh, yeah. Father, tonight we thank you for those who stood this morning with prayer requests on their hearts. We ask you, Father, that you watch over them and bless them, their requests, Father. Be with Sister Pilsen, Father, who's at this time preparing for our uh, hip placement service, Father. We ask you to bless him as he took this service. This service. Father, we thank you so much for, for those men and those women who will be in the room performing surgery. Father, we thank you for blessing them that they may understand the things that they need to do to be for Sister Wilson, Father. Father, we come on behalf of Sister William, Father, as he's working around the uh, COVID patient. Father, we, we thank you, Father, for blessing her. We actually put a hedge around her at this thank time, you. Father. And Father, not only do we uh, thank you for uh, Sister William, who's a frontline worker, but Father, all the frontline workers mm -hmm. who deal with yeah. COVID patients, Father. Oh, yeah. We ask the Father that you continue to be with them, Father. Continue to protect them during this time. Yeah. Father, we thank you for all you've done. We ask this prayer in Son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have a closing prayer. Sister Dee Dee Foster has asked that there be a prayer for one of her, one of her relatives. Uh, it's in the thread on the uh, Facebook, so we remember the prayers that are closing prayer. Please, please uh, pray for Sister Foster's, uh, Dee Foster's uh, relative at the time. It's not as time to set aside where we give back to what the Lord has uh, blessed us with. And we do that in our offering. I read for our hearing 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 7, and 8. But this I say, he was so sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. He was so bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. Every man is important to be purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have all sufficiencies in all things, that ye may abound to every good work. At this time, we give you an opportunity to give. On world rejoicing, I tread life's way higher, I'm climbing each path. And those who give tops of glory now rise in you, where all shall be made new. I see those hill tops of glory I now can see. Oh, brother, won't you just come go with me? I'm safe on the mountain, I soon shall stand. On those hilltops of glory land. So way down, way down in Egypt, in burning sand. Moses has started for the land. And no, we'll never turn back. We're always a sin. Oh, to the journey's end. I see those Hilltops of glory, I now can see. Oh, brother, won't you just come go with me? I'm safe on the mountain, I soon shall stand on those hilltops of glory. Also, we are going to take up a second offering. This is for appreciation for brothers and sisters, for brothers, uh, for the service they give to this con congregation. At this time, we have an opportunity to give. Footsteps of Jesus before us be, and we tread life's journey, his warning seed, and all those evil allurements cannot prevail. And I'm on the upward trail. I see. 
see those hilltops of glory I now can see. Oh, brother, won't you just come home with me? Because I'm safe for the mountain I soon just stay on those hilltops of glory. One more time I see those hilltops of glory I now can see. Oh, brother, won't you just come go with me? Because I'm safe for the mountain. I soon just stand on those hills of glory. Let's pray for all. Your holy, righteous Father in heaven, we come before you, Father. Thank, Father, thank you for your Son, Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for everything you have blessed us with. We thank you for everything you have given us. Father, we know we can't outlove you, but one of the ways we have an opportunity to show our love is in our giving. Mm -hmm. And we pray that this offering was taken up today, was pleasing to you, Father, and also be used for the spreading of the gospel. Father, we also pray for the offering that's taken up for our brother and sister Carruthers, the appreciation that they uh, that we have for them and mm -hmm. teaching us and supporting and leading this congregation. Amen. And we thank you for your blessings for such a man of God as this. Mm -hmm. We pray for this offering that was given out of love. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Also, upon the first day of the week, we are to commune, recognizing the death of Christ Jesus, the sacrifice he made for each and every one of us. I'll read from Acts 27, showing when we are to commune. Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. In 1 Corinthians 11:23. Paul gives an example of why we commune. For I received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the same night Jesus was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread. Dear Holy and Righteous Father in heaven, we come, Father, partake of the communion. The bread represents your son's body. We pray we take this bread in remembrance of Christ Jesus and his sacrifice. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, let the church say, Amen. Amen. After the same man, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray for the cup. Your holy righteous Father in heaven, we come before you once again, Father. Thank you for your son, Christ Jesus. We pray for this cup, Father, that we take in remembrance of the sacrifice Christ made, for without the shedding of his blood, there be no remission of our sins. We pray to remember Christ's sacrifice. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The ushers will come before you now and collect your attendance cards. Everybody on the hold to his hold on to my God's understanding. Everybody on the hold to his hand to my God's understanding. Everybody. 
on this morning as well. It's not because you don't like them. It's because you love them and you want the best for them. Thank you, guests, for being here consistently. I see we have another guest back here in front of Brother Terry. You, you got, I think that's a beard or a mask. Oh, that's my brother. Good, good to have you this morning in front of Brother Terry. Oh, that, that, good to have you here this morning. And any of our guests who are with us from week to week, let's remember all of them. And be safe this week. Be safe uh, this week. We know you're getting together for the holidays, but, but be safe. Um, are there any other announcements, uh, brothers? Yeah. All right. Uh, we did not make an announcement about giving to the preacher this year. We, we usually have that in the bulletin. We can have it in, in the bulletin. Uh, I was saying just don't worry about that uh, this year because we don't want to say it's COVID-19. Brother, brother, <laughs> Jim. Yeah. <laughs> but we thank you for what you have done. If nothing else, consider yourselves just as.